Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Play on GAA. My name is Seamus Brady, I have Luke Payton here with me as always and we're going to talk about one of the best games of Gaelic football that we've seen, Luke. Armagh versus Galway in Croke Park. Galway 221, Armagh 318 after extra time. Galway winning on penalties. One of the most amazing atmospheres I've seen as well. Absolute sellout in Croke Park. First time since before covid I mean, what an incredible game. Let's get into the full match review. But before we do, please like, subscribe, share and comment. It really helps us out. And let's go. So as I was saying, amazing atmosphere, the sellout and everything. Very interesting matchups right from the start. Sean Kelly was on Reno Neal. James Morgan was on Shane Walsh. Aidan Forker was on Damian Comer. Patrick Kelly as well picked up Jarlio Burns. There were some really interesting matchups going on all over the pitch. And right from the start, Luke, these two teams are very, very evenly matched. Half time, seven points apiece, level at full time, level at the end of extra time, and it took penalties to separate them. What did you make of the game? Yeah, it was a, it was, it was just, it was the most bizarre, remarkable game. Look, obviously, most people when are clicking on this will be going thinking straight away about the about the fight. Look, we have we've done another video on that as well, so we can park that anyway. But <clears throat> I think just. The drama of it as well. First of all, I want to say, like, look, Armad, the numbers in which Armad travelled down to that game were absolutely remarkable, really. And it was only kind of noticeable, I think, that in the Kerry, the Kerry Mayo game afterwards, that once the Armad fans had all left, that the how many of them there were, the whole stadium afterwards for the second game just felt dead in comparison. Whereas the noise that was there for, for even with the Galway fans as well, kind of before, that it was just the most remarkable atmosphere and. Uh, and played into what was the most tense kind of uh, the kind of remarkable game really. So like Galway looks like did Galway looks like in the entire normal time that they'd have enough to get over the line, and then they just had an absolute meltdown at the end. And uh, and look, they they showed some serious kind of flaws, but look, they they managed to get over the line. And look, I know penalties is a lottery, but it was it was the fair result in the end. And that Galway look, Galway probably should have won it in both normal time and extra time I would have thought based on the pattern of play yeah I would absolutely agree with that I mean let's go through the whole game so of course the first half seven points apiece pretty even throughout I mean no team went more than three points ahead at any stage in the first half it was pretty much tit for tat then into the second half one of the key moments 40th minute goal Johnny Heaney palmed it in Matthew Tierney hit the crossbar was tapped onto the bar by Ethan Rafferty came back and then Johnny Heaney was on hand to palm at home. He was set up. That was a massive goal for Galway. It really put them in the driving seat for a lot of that game. Armad then were on the back foot from that point on. Yeah, definitely. And look, that's when look Galway started stretching the lead out then as well. And it just looked inevitable that they were going to uh, they were going to be able to drive themselves over the line. And look, it was uh, like a kind of jump into that. End end of the game where the last five minutes or so you could say like it was just it was it was bizarre stuff from Galway was that it was two complete hail mary balls put in and with the bounce and everything there as well and that they just couldn't they couldn't cope with this high ball coming in whatsoever and then ultimately finished up with palm palmed goals and everything as well and then the most bizarre of it all was Shane Walsh with about twenty seconds to go that. Like all he had to do was to uh, to hold on to the ball or even just lay off a simple hand pass, and he tries the most the most ridiculous outside the boot pass shot. I don't even know what it was yeah. to no one to no one. Like there was nobody near. That I don't even know what he was trying to do, whether it was a shot or a pass or anything like that. And then go straight up and Rain O'Neill kicks the free that comes directly from that as well. So like Galway. They absolutely shot themselves completely in the foot there with the last few minutes. Like the defending was car crash stuff. The goalkeeping was even worse. And then, like, and then the Shane Walsh thing as well. And then look for the fact that we got the brawl then straight away after that as well. Between all that, it was just it was unbelievable drama really. Between number one, we saw like nearly saw an all time capitulation, and then number two, we saw the huge dust up as well. And then look, the the extra time break seemed like it went on for about twenty five minutes as well. Like between the fight and everything as well, it was the longest extra time break I think I've ever seen. And uh, just between all of that, like you'd be exhausted nearly before extra time had even started. And uh, yeah, look, it was it was it was just a really it was a very, it was just a, a classic of a of an ending, I suppose, just a normal time. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the two goals that 
that goal he conceded was just ridiculous. I mean, it was literally route one. Just put a big fella in there, put Ben Creeley off six foot six of in and on the square and just, just kick it in high. And Conor Gleeson just, I mean, there's, there's your route. I mean, if Derry, Derry are watching that, like De- Derry will be sitting there thinking, yep, yeah, Shane McGuigan, that's, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice two goals for him. Connor, that's a nice two goals for Benny Hare. Yeah, yeah, Connor Glass on the edge of the Connor, square there. Connor Glass might be making, yeah, I think he might be making his, uh, Full they might be hit. doing a bit of rotation and a bit of rotation, and they could drop somebody in midfield sometimes and let him go to go in full forward for a bit. Based off that, like, like number one, Galway don't seem to have the kind of command and fullback. Like Sean Kelly did played really really well, and it's like he's a really good man marker, but he's not he's not a fullback. Like he's been converted into doing this. He's a very good man marker, and that he's he did he he did pretty well I think on Rain O'Neill and it was a good really good tussle there as well. But he's not somebody who's gonna man the edge of the square. And you look in the rest of the full back line, Jack Lynn's a small little fellow, Liam Silk as well. They don't have that command in full back. And then obviously look, the keeper is the the op, what the absolute opposite of commanding as well. So uh they look I think that has to be a big, big concern for them going forward. And like I think any team looking at this going forward anything left in the championship looking at that well, I think we'll be uh, yeah they'll be they'll be happy enough to take a few speculative enough shots in case they drop short yeah well my, my suggestion is Sean Andy O'Kellick I mean he was the fullback under Kevin Walsh he's a big tower and man he's a massive presence in there a fullback massive presence he'd be great under a high ball and I mean I don't know why Parry Joyce just didn't take a fancy to him or whatever he wanted to play this more pace based game I get it but Sean Andy O'Gallagher would have been great there to throw back in in the last few minutes, shore up the defence against the high ball that was definitely going to come in, by the way. Um, but instead, you're right, they have only small lads in the full back line and a goalkeeper that was happy to kind of sit on his goal line and wait for the ball to come into him rather than doing anything and taking a step out towards it. Um, the other key moment in normal time, this was before the two goals went in. Of course, the goals were scored by Aidan Nugent and then Connor Turbot kicked the second one into the back of the net before Reno O'Neill got his free after Shane Walsh gave it away. And the red card for Greg McCabe. Of course, he clashed with Matthew Tierney. Very hard clash. Um, really hard to call, to be honest. I was surprised when the red card was shown. Some replays, it looks like, you know, Maybe it was the right decision. Some replays, I'm like, no, he meant to hit him. And my instinct is he meant to hit him shoulder to shoulder. I didn't think he meant to hit him in the head. I think he meant to, I think he meant to clean him out, but I think he meant to do it fairly. What was your stance on that? Red card or yellow or what? Yeah, look, I, I think I think it's one of these that the, the card colour is impacted by the, the end results of the tackle. And look, obviously, the tackle did a bit of damage. And it caught it caught head high, and I think once it gets into that, look, you're gonna be lucky to avoid red once that happens. With the way that the game is now at the moments that we've seen, like after the whole incident with the John Small and Owen McLaughlin, the fallout from that last year as well, I think look the GA are probably gonna make a point that they're not gonna allow another incident like that. And I thought it was nearly it was just kind of reminiscent of the John Small incident last year. So I think look, based on the kind of everything that happened after John Small last year. I think the GA are going to make sure that no, they don't have another incident like that. So, look, I'd expect those type of tackles are going to keep being red cards like from now on in GA. And uh, yeah, look, I think look, I completely agree. No intention whatsoever to do to to catch him on the head. But look, when you do, look, you have to be uh, prepared that you could be facing uh, the consequences that he did. Yeah, no doubt. The other key moments as well, of course, the swapping of the goals during uh, extra time. Rory Grugan, this was the softest goal of the lot. I mean, literally, uh, this is the one I'm talking about. Bounced, <laughs> bounced. The goalkeeper standing there, just watching it come in. And then it just seems like the Galway defenders are just like, no, we've conceded the goal. Then Killian McDade scores a brilliant goal. Brilliantly set up by, I think it was, it was Mannion, young Mannion that came off the bench. Lovely one-two with Shane Walsh into Killian McDade, who would hit a brilliant finish, by the way. He's going full pace into the corner. And then, of course, the penalty shootout. Galway winning by four goals to one. Arma, pretty poor in the penalties. Stefan Campbell and uh, Turbot both missing the target. Galway's penalty is brilliant. What did you make of those three key moments? Yeah, so quickly on the... Uh... 
like the Armagh goal as well. Look, it was I uh, look, it was it was hilarious stuff, really. Kind of, and that it was a Reno Neil shot that dropped about twenty yards short. Kieran Malloy decides to jump out of the way of the ball instead of catching it, and then uh, and then look, it just kind of starts slowly bouncing towards the goal, and then before you know, Grugan's fisting it in, and like it was just bizarre stuff. And then, but look, credit. Oh, credit to Killian McDade as well, who, like in extra time, really grabbed that game, but scruffed the neck, and he kicked one absolutely huge score as well. Like it was a big, big score that he kicked to uh, to ensure the kind of that it went to to penalties in the end as well. So he was he was absolutely huge in the uh, in extra time as well. And look, based off that, had to be man the match really. And then when it comes to penalties, look, it's a lottery, and uh, and look. You, your your penalties are there to be are there to be finished like in GA penalty shoots. I'm gonna keep saying it. If you hit the target with the way goalkeepers are in the GA, yeah. it's not soccer. Like if you hit the target, chances are you're gonna score. So yeah, now 100. 100. Okay, guys, that is the match review. What a game going into the All Ireland semi finals after penalties. In my opinion, they deserved it, but they are true. That's the match review, guys. Thanks for watching. Until the next one, take care.